of the typical supply chain process for coffee. Um, so it starts off obviously with the farmers who will, after five years of growing the beans, they will harvest it whether through wet processing or dry processing, uh, which will then go on to the organizations. This will obviously differ between countries. Uh, for example, in Ethiopia, the government will uh, collect all the produce and sell it to the highest bidder in order to ensure um, the highest and best price for the farmers. It will then obviously go on to the intermediary or the exporters and then to the exporters and importers, uh, which will then uh, deliver it to the consuming party or the consuming country. Uh, so some supply chain processes uh, for some uh, internal policies due, due to internal policies of the companies will stop uh, there as some uh, and not go on to the uh, roast, roasting stage as some companies uh, decide that it's better for them to roast it internally and directly supply it to the uh, customer. Uh, then uh, for that, uh, I think take note of uh, Café uh, Arabic or also known as Arabic coffee. So it is the most uh, produced coffee in the world, c c covering 60% uh, of global productions. Uh, there is a very good ratio of uh, caffeine to uh, sugar content, of caffeine levels of 1.5% of the coffee bean, and uh, in contrast to sugar of 6 uh, to 9% uh, uh, sugar levels. So it has a very wide range of growth, as you can see from this map. Um, so it, 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 it will grow all over um, uh, South America and Africa with a wide uh, range and given the high production, the average price uh, per kilogram is $2.85. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, we've got Robusta. So Robusta is the second most uh, populated or most produced coffee in the world covering 31% of global production. It has a relatively high caffeine level of 2.7% in comparison to its relatively low sugar content of 3.7 uh, 3.7%, it's mainly grown in Vietnam, Brazil and India. Uh, the average price is 1.67 uh, dollars per uh, per kilogram. So people who usually consume robusta would 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 describe it as a, a nutty and bitter flavor in comparison to um arabica which they would say that has a very um very very good high quality flavor. So, and then moving on, we've got the Liberica. So Liberica, a bit of history about it is that it started off uh, in Vietnam after the, uh, the, the uh, uh, coffee market collapsed there. So it was introduced as a substitute for Arabica. So which is why it only makes up 2% of the global production and mainly consumed in Asia uh, and obviously produced in uh, Malaysia, Philippines and Indonesia. Uh, for that, it, it really hasn't penetrated the Western market and it hasn't been appealed to the Western consumer, which is why um, it, uh, as it's considered to have a bitter taste and it's referred to as the men's coffee for how strong it is. So critics here in the UK and uh, considered it to have uh, or described it to have a, a burnt rubbery uh, taste. Um, and the average price is relatively high given the fact that there's a, a very long supply chain Additionally, um, the, the low uh, productions and the uh, low demand. So the significant uh, difference between uh, Arabica and Robusta, as we are recommending those two types of coffee. Um, so obviously, we've got the obvious, uh, the, the shape of the two beans. Um, obviously, uh, Arabica, as I said, it has a wider range of growth. So ranging from 600 and 2,200 uh, meters. Um, uh, and doesn't require as much rainfall in comparison to Robusta and it has a wider range of uh, growth and it is grown mainly in uh, tropical weather. In comparison to, uh, however, you've got the caffeine uh, and sugar contents as I said, Arabica has a, a, a higher sugar uh, content than, uh, than the caffeine so which is which gives it that higher quality taste in comparison to Robusta which, uh, which also has a relatively high um, uh, caffeine level in comparison to its lower sugar, uh, lower average sugar content of uh, six to uh, or three to seven uh, percent. So uh, additionally, you've got the uh, chlor uh, chlorogenic acid and the lipids. Um, you've got uh, arabica, which has a higher lipid rate uh, 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 percentage than uh, robusta. Uh, basically, lipids are the basically antioxidants that are in um, the, the the coffees. So which, which is why Arabica is considered to have um, a stronger uh, uh, quality, higher quality. So for that, we recommend, uh, for, in regards to Arabica, I'm recommending, or we're recommending uh, Brazil. 
the fact, uh, given the fact that it's the largest uh, uh, producer of coffee in the world, so it provides uh, undistrib un undisturbed uh, flow of coffee. Uh, governmental regulations uh, mean uh, no tariff of the, uh, on the export of coffee, so and there's a high demand on the international market. Um, and given the fact that there's there there there's a immense technological moves um, in the uh, in the market, uh, production is a lot smoother. Uh, supply chains are a lot shorter now, and they are they're shifting to one ton uh, super sacks in comparison to the regular sixty kgs, which means it's uh, the it drives the prices even lower. And when it comes to uh, robusta coffee, we're recommending Vietnam because uh, um, there's a high level of government involvement in it from all uh, from all types of the, uh, in all areas of the supply chain. Uh, there are different qualities uh, of the coffee ranging from uh, grade one all the way to grade uh, um, to grade four. Um, and given the decrease or the constant decrease of the export prices throughout the years, um, it would make it a lot easier uh, for the consumer. And obviously, through the use of uh, uh, polypellerine bags, it basically means the insurance of higher quality and uh, higher quality coffee, and uh, it it will really impact the the degradation of the level of quality.